My awareness of this game was that it's a platformer of some kind where you have to push stuff. Pretty simple. Gave me a good little starting story explaining that I was a tribesman called Ganuti who was so great at pushing stuff that I was going to go and represent my clan in a pushing stuff contest and had to get there by, you guessed it, pushing stuff. There were spelling errors in the story, I won't lie. My eyes are instantly drawn to spelling errors like a hawk to its prey and I very rarely don't notice. So, uh, next time maybe I'll work on the spelling just for a bit of extra polish. And also capitalization. Our tribal friend deserves a capital letter at the front of his name. Otherwise, the tutorial was very well detailed and explained the general concepts of the game very well. Obviously, standard controls being move, jump and push, but with some additions that made for useful puzzle solving. Our good friend Ganuti has a magic staff, and at certain points of the levels, there are areas of ground he can place it in. What this does is effectively make a checkpoint, and you can move your checkpoint back and forth through the levels whenever you please. This is a useful tool for solving puzzles, coupled with your other two abilities. These are that you can reset the area you're in and return to your checkpoint if you realise you've completely screwed up and trapped yourself, which is always good when you're me and your IQ is about 15, and the ability to summon your faithful purple-tinged block to use should you need it. Although it will only appear at your checkpoint. When it comes to button-activated doors, though, it is very useful when you remember you have it. Combined with switch-activated moving platforms, contact-activated moving platforms, waterfalls that insta return you to your previous checkpoint, and lots of blocks to move around that have the ability to hover if in contact with another surface, the setup for puzzles is very good, and I'd clocked an hour and 40 minutes playtime without even realising, just from going through the first three levels. Saying that, there are only five levels overall in the game, Trust me, I checked the achievements, but I suppose they can't expect there to be endless content from a free-to-play and a two-man project at that. There's an added option to collect pieces of masks to unlock a new one for our pal Ganuti to wear. It has no added gain other than aesthetics, but it does make you solve a few more puzzles, they're not handed to you on a plate. Some of these instances are optional and you can forgo them if you want, but it's entirely up to you. If you consider it, but it looks kind of like too much effort, the game equips you with a camera mode sort of thing where you can look around the map and see what you're in for, which is also good for helping figure out what's happening whilst you're solving a puzzle. The art is good, there's an easy differentiation between what bit of the level does what, and between your personal magic block and the many others. The textures are simplistic and easy on the eyes, and whilst it does get a little bit samey after a while, the mix-up of the level environments from stage to stage help to quell any risk of it coming visually dull. And I think partly in platformers you have to stick with a particular design once you've coded it to an object that can perform an action, such as the magic ground, because it needs to be recognisable. And it is. The music is decent, smooth jazz helping to quell any perpetual rage maybe a little bit, or alternatively stoke your rage as if it's mocking you, and the puzzles are well designed and fairly difficult. Although, the reason some of them are very difficult is because of the game itself, mainly the hitboxes on the blocks because despite being square, they interact with the character as if they have round edges, which means that if you stand too close to the edge, or you're trying to stand on a small bit of one so that you can grab another, it's likely that you'll slip off. And sometimes if you slip off, you can fall to your death, or fall very far behind where you were, or move another block somewhere where you don't need it to be, which can be a really frustrating setback. It also means that sometimes you can't jump from the edge of a block properly because it doesn't class you as being on a stable base and you can't jump in the air. Also, the throwing mechanism for blocks is initiated by simply pushing it off an edge at a little speed. The problem with that is that you have to immediately backpedal, and if you don't do it fast enough, the momentum and slippery edges can cause you to fall to your death again anyway, and it makes all your effort pointless. The jump also seems to pick and choose sometimes if it wants to reach the next platform, even though the distance appears like it should be reachable, meaning you sometimes have to hop at the edge of a ledge like an over-enthusiastic chihuahua attempting to reach a treat before it will actually let you up. In general, the game is good for killing a fair amount of time. It engages the brain, graphics are simple and functionable, mechanics are good, and the puzzles are challenging. More in execution than strategizing, but I can handle that. Unfortunately, the hitboxes let it down a bit and make it unnecessarily hard at some points, which is most of the reason for me penalising it. It was good, and it had a fair amount of content, killed a fair amount of time, and the ideas were quite intuitive for the puzzles, but 
it was just the hitboxes that seemed to take all of the extra time with it, and it just made it unnecessarily hard. Music's fairly decent, story's a nice addition and gives us some purpose, although it would benefit from a spell checker. Maps are relatively similar, but not too much, and overall I'd rate it a 5.5 out of 10 for being a decent time burner. Credit to the two creators, you did a good job between you two.